Hey, it's Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about VPT8 and projection mapping. I like to make the most of your time, so let's get to the demo. In this demo, you see what's called a projection map on the wall. Projection maps can get very complicated, but this is a very simple one where I'm making a virtual window to Las Vegas. This window is actually a live cam feed that I've recorded and I'm replaying projection mapped onto the wall. In this next clip, I'm showing Rome to show that you can have different windows to different worlds. And finally, in this, I'm showing Thailand because it would be fun, I thought, to have a window to the beach. And when I'm working from home, it would make it feel like I was somewhere else. So that's a demo of projection mapping. It's basically taking a projection and deforming it over a physical object. Now, in this case, physical object is already a flat wall, so we're just doing perspective correction. But there's much more complicated effects that can be done. For instance, some people have used this for haunted houses. This has also been used for cakes and just in general to make something come alive. In this video, I'm gonna show you the geek tool of projection mapping using the software called VPT8, which is free. At the end of the video, I'll talk about this window project a bit more and where I wanna take it in the future and what problems I'm still working on solving. For now, let's get into VPT8. So what you see here is side by side. You see the projection on the wall of the second monitor on my computer and you can see and what we're gonna do is I've copied the empty project folder into demo here. And in this video folder, we're gonna put a couple of videos. These are in the video folder. And this is important because this is the default folder where videos get loaded from. So the next thing we need to do is launch VPT8. There we go. And I'll double click on it. Now notice the orange bars at the top. To get rid of that, we're gonna click full screen in this window. Now, the first thing I want to do is say file open and open that project. And I have to do that before I forget, or let's see, VPT8 demos is where I want to be. Don't want to forget that. Okay. Now, even though it looks the same, it's in a totally different mode in which we can do stuff. So remember what I was saying about that default video folder? There's my videos showing up right there. So if I click on a video, uh, it shows up. Now this is a source, and these are all sources that can be mixed together. A source is different than a layer. To actually see something, you need to add a layer. The plus and minus signs here, this will add layers. So if I hit plus, there's a one, and the layer gets added down here. And then this is the source for the layer. So we're gonna say one video, which is maps to this one here. And now this source is mapped to the layer. We just need to turn it on. And there we go. Now you can see in my preview window, it looks fine, but on the wall, it looks a mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit it using what are called handles. So I'm gonna make them bigger. Right down here, you can see large, extra large. Now the handles show up a little bit better and I'm gonna make my preview window a bit bigger here. You can just drag it uh, there, you can drag it here. Okay, now we're gonna go make this about the size that I want my window and I'm gonna look at the screen now to make sure things look like parallel right angles. Uh, it's very important to look at the screen for this because if you look at the preview window, it will mess you up pretty bad. Okay, this actually looks somewhat close, but it's it's definitely different. So there you go, that looks better there. And I could tweak this for probably way too long, so I'm gonna try to avoid doing that. Okay, now that looks kind of cool. Um, I've made a big window on the left-hand side, and this is my video stream of Las Vegas. This is captured off of Earth Cams using video capture software. Uh, I actually use PowerPoint to do this, but there's a number of things that you can use to do this. Now that we have this, uh, we want another layer. I want to add a window here. So I'm going to go find a window. Let's see. I think this Makerspace folder has a window in it. In this video folder here. Yep, there's a window there, that PNG thing. So what we're going to do is... This is a kind of an odd way to do this, so please watch carefully. This folder here says default here, and these are the files that are in that folder. 
If I want to load files from a different folder, I drag the folder over, not the file. You have to drag the folder. When you drag that over, you see now it says video. It's matching what this folder says. But everything under here is all of the vi videos that I have in that folder. And we're going to load this right here. We'll turn it on and do a preview. And you can see it's a window shade. Now I need to add a layer. So I'm going to click plus. There's a second layer. I'm going to tell that second layer to use video two. And now we have a window to our Las Vegas. Now it's obviously a stop. So we're going to work on that now. And I'm going to move these handles around to kind of frame the video off here. There we go. It looks kind of cool. It's getting there. The preview window will always look a little bit warped. So now I have a window into Las Vegas and that's, that's pretty cool. Oh, if I add a, another video here, let's see, let's do uh, the temple bar in Ireland. This is video source three. If I change from video source one to three, then all of the warping I've done is kept. And now I'm looking at Ireland. There's a guy walking around the corner. Let's add another video source. Let's see what else we have. We have New York. I believe this was a sunrise in New York, so we can switch to video four. Yep, there we go. Now we're looking out at New York. Now, if I click full screen here, it will re-render this. It'll darken it up and it will get rid of the top bar. And that looks a lot better. It's a bit blurry because I don't have my projector fully focused, but it shows the concept. Let's go to video three, see what that looks like. Temple bar looks a lot better. And video one, there's Las Vegas. That's uh, Fremont Street in Las Vegas. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we've done a mapping. Let's hide our, if you go here and click, it will hide the bars. And now I have my window into another world. So let me show you what I'm gonna work on for the next video. And this one's a bit shaky. This was actually captured off of a virtual reality system. This is a Disney app that was free, but it kind of gave me a window to Disneyland and I thought that was neat. This one's actually from the game Bioshock and it's an underwater window. It's actually got a frame on it already. So what I'm gonna do is fade out the frame by taking the layer two and dragging here just to hide it for a second. In the next video, we'll talk about how I captured this footage as well. This was kind of fun to capture. This is the city of Rapture in the game Bioshock. You can see the luggage falling down from the plane crash. But I thought it'd be really cool to have a window to Rapture that I could just kind of look out of here and there. And this is the kind of stuff that I was really excited about doing with the projection mapping window concept. If you want to see how to do this, hit subscribe. In my next video, I'll talk about how I captured this footage. I wanted to keep it separate from this video so I could focus on just projection mapping. Thanks. I hope that tutorial was really straightforward for you. I felt like when I learned projection mapping, I learned a really cool geek tool that I was really excited about because I can do this for all sorts of different things. I have a video where I did it on the Disney castle for my wife, and I want to do a bunch of other cool projects in the future with this. Projection mapping to me was a geek tool that like anything, once you know it, it's something that you can kind of tuck in your tool belt. And as you go on and you think about innovative things you want to do, it's something you can pull out in the future for any kind of presentation or adding some whiz bang to a project. Hopefully that VPTA tutorial will help you look at that user interface and make some sense of it. And once you understand it, it is very straightforward and fairly easy to use to get some really cool projection maps going. I'm very impressed with the depth and complexity of that pro program. And they have an hour long tutorial that will really take you through everything on it. It's got everything from MIDI inputs to vision based uh, control mechanisms. Like it's a very, very, impressive program in itself. For the window project, ideally I would have live cam feeds out there that I can project on my wall. I think that would be really cool to have some kind of like Dynatap thing where I scan a figure and it changes the camera. And that's where I was going with this project. Right now, the CPU and GPU requirements for this were quite heavy to both take a webcam feed and then map it live onto the wall. It just, took more CPU and GPU than I had available at the time. Now, converting it over from live to a recorded is very easy and very inexpensive, and that's why you saw it. I, I do what I did. 
This brings the project down, I would say, under $200 for the projector and a thumb drive that can record this and show it up on the wall. The other thing I would like to do in the future is I think that Dynatap would be a really cool way to control what was playing on the projector, especially for kids. You could see a kid walking in, let's say, and maybe scanning a figure and then having the Disney Castle projected on their wall. Um, or maybe they scan another figure and they're in like Hogwarts. So I think that there's something really cool there, but it's going to take me a little bit of time to build it. I wanted to show where I was at now because I think that understanding projection mapping and understanding VPT8 is a powerful thing that the community can go use and run with right now. So that's why I made this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Until next time, if you want to see that video, please subscribe. If you like this one and want to see more like this, please click the like button. And if you have anything that you want to tell me, say it down in the comments. I really appreciate the comments and I try to read every one of them. So thank you so much. Have a great one and I'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.